Hi there and welcome back to Valley Por Vida. Well, it's time now to dive deep into our heart of uh, the great state of stories from Texas. Some of them are true. Now, RGV professor, radio commentator for Texas Standard, and of course, author W.F. Strong takes us on an adventure in praise of Valley Vultures. Take a look. I go for walks in the country often this time of year here in the Rio Grande Valley. This is our Goldilocks season, not too hot, not too cold, just right. We have a perfectly warming sun in the crisp, cool air of winter mornings. I like to walk along a dirt road that has freshly plowed farmland on one side and a deep mott of mesquite and wisachi trees on the other. A committee of vultures watches me from atop the tallest of these trees, far away from civilization. That's the official name for a group of vultures, a committee. Sometimes they are also called a venue of vultures. I like that. Based on what I've seen of committees and their venues, I can see the salience of the metaphor. In Texas, these birds are often mistakenly called buzzards. This is common, but it is technically wrong because buzzards are a completely different bird. We don't have buzzards in Texas, though I will admit to calling them that myself growing up. I don't recall referring to groups of birds by their correct labels either, such as murder of crows or covey of quail or flamboyance of flamingos. I still don't. I tend more toward my brother Redneck Dave's lexicon, which is pretty much reduced to the word bunch. He says, you got a bunch of ducks in your yard. And if there's more than that, he says, you got a whole bunch of ducks in your yard. More still are covered by, you got a mighty big bunch of ducks in your yard back to the vultures. This committee of vultures, turkey vultures in this case, are perched high up in the trees like undertakers eyeing me, sometimes stretching out their wings to display their impressive six-foot span. But mostly I'm a curiosity, not a disturbance. They don't fly away. I'm sure I would be much more interesting to them if I were dead. Turkey vultures don't have a lot of fans. Many people see them as disgusting birds that eat disgusting things. They have red heads, they're mostly bald, with faces that only a mother could love, a mother vulture, that is. On the ground, picking through roadkill, they look ungraceful and ragged and ungainly. But in the air, they are, to me, transformed into graceful, heart-stirring masters of the wind. On the ground, they are called committees, but in the air, they are called kettles of vultures, because in their swirling ride upward on the thermals, they look like bubbles rising in heated water. It is by riding high on the thermals that they hunt for carrion, dead things. They don't do it by sight, they do it by smell. The smell of the decaying animals is carried up by the thermals and the birds track that smell to the source. Tests have shown that they always arrive on the upwind side of the corpus delicti and that's how experts know that smell is dominant. Yes, the process to us is gross, but if you consider the scientific name for the turkey vulture, Cathertes ara, they sound noble. It means cleansing breeze. They swoop in on the wind and clean the earth. And they are disinfectors too, consuming anthrax and cholera bacteria and safely removing it. In this case, they are hazmat teams. But my admiration for these magnificent creatures is fully realized watching them in flight. I can sit in my backyard and watch hundreds of them ride up high in the sky like an avian tornado. They're having fun up there. They're not all about carrion, I'm convinced. They're windsurfers, fully elated by the vulture sport they collectively love. The winds do not conquer them. They ride them high into the vaulted blue, cloudless skies. Some, pilots tell us, go as high as 20,000 feet and they rarely have to flap their wings. They just soar and glide at one with the wind. You can find them all across Texas along with their slightly smaller cousins, the black vultures, which prefer the eastern part of the state. Together, they are our cleaners, our sanitizers, the avian last line of defense for our most famous slogan, don't mess with Texas. I'm Debbie Strong. These are stories from Texas. Some of them are true. There you have it. That was stories from Texas. Some of them are true. Feel free to follow WF Strong and his stories on Twitter or Facebook if you'd like more information. 
Well, if you're looking for a furry friend to become a part of your family, then listen up. It's time now for our Pet of the Week segment, brought to you by the Humane Society of Harlingen. Hi everybody, Sarah here with the Humane Society of Harlingen and I'm here with one of our longer term residents, PJ. PJ came in with a bit of an injury to one of his back legs and it looks like he's gonna eventually have to get an amputation, but he's the happiest, friendliest cat in the world. He loves to play and cuddle. Um, we think that he would be an amazing pet for somebody and like most of us, he's looking toward a brighter 2021. So if you're interested in adopting him or checking out any of the other amazing pets that we have here at the Humane Society of Harlingen, go ahead and go to the website on the bottom of your screen. Or if you're interested in adopting to help other pets just like PJ, go ahead and go on there as well. There are lots of information on there to help you figure out exactly what you're trying to do. Have a wonderful new year from all of us at the Humane Society of Harlingen. Sarah's team is always looking to provide homeless cats and dogs with care and the opportunity to find their forever home. If you'd like to adopt one of these pets, then feel free to visit their location in Harlingen or, of course, you can always visit hshtx.org. Well, there's always a topic or theme to celebrate, and according to the national calendar, April is no different. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on this month. The month of April marks National Canine Fitness Month, National Internship Awareness Month, International Guitar Month, National Autism Awareness Month, and National Humor Month. According to the calendar, this is your chance to make sure you, uh, your most loyal companions are healthy and staying physically active. It's also your chance to explore the countless opportunities that internships can offer as a door into a professional career. You can also use this month to pick up the hobby of playing guitar or learning new songs if you're a player already and even consider teaching someone else a few chords and of course it's autism awareness month which means it's a great time to educate yourself and your community about this disease maybe look for ways to donate lend support or volunteer locally Lastly, April is the perfect month to indulge uh, in life's ultimate medicine, which is laughter. Consider dropping by a local comedy club or attending a comedy show online to get in some good smiles and laughs. Now, there are over 20 different topics and themes to observe this month of April, so be sure to stick with our Valley Por Vida team for more on the National Month calendar throughout the week. All right, well, that's all of our time for now. Thanks again so much for joining us. And be sure to tune in again tomorrow because we'll be dropping by Workforce Solutions Hidalgo for an inside look at jobs here in the Valley. We've also got more details on RGV events happening this month. That's fun for the whole family. You won't want to miss it. Plus, we're talking about how you can use your tax refund to get a great new deal on a car. More tips and tricks. Don't forget to follow our team on social media for exclusive behind-the-scenes sneak peeks at what we're filming for the show. All of that and so much more tomorrow on Valley Por Vida. We'll see you then.